Yeah, well, you found Crow, and you're not going anywhere until we turbo duel. For a long time on the channel, we've always been talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, and sometimes, whenever I get the chance, if some certain character would appear in my videos or tangentially be mentioned, I wouldn't hesitate to spit his name out with a large amount of vitriol along with it. And that character would be, my friends, Crow Goddamn Hogan from Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. Every time I would bring this character up, I would get flooded with comments as to why I detested this character. Especially since the guy tends to be a very popular one online. Ah! He runs a deck that is a fan favorite in Yu-Gi-Oh. Everyone loves Black Wings. <laughs> That's a lie! He constantly gets support in it. We have enough fuck Black Wings this- And was one of the few characters to be brought back in a later series of Yu-Gi-Oh. Crow Hogan blah, is supposedly a popular character. So, why don't I like him? Well, the detectives in my audience should have a few clues to that, as I've alluded in my reasons for disliking Crow as a character and narratively in my Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds videos rather blatantly. But my dislike for Crow runs deeper than that. And it's not just because the dub makes him out to be dumber than a sack of hammers. Three? If you're so worried about Yusei, why don't you go look for him? I would, but Clucker's deep fried chicken doesn't deliver itself. I'm on the clock. Ugh, <gasps> man, these yahoos. I'm sure you say it's okay. So he didn't call Crow back. No big deal. Well, actually, it's not just that. I also got this really weird message at the garage. Your friend Yusei Fudo has been taken. I thought you should know. What? Why are you just now telling us this? I didn't want to freak anyone out. Crow Hogan, I dub thee the dumbest character in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds for that line alone. But before I devolve this video into justified Crow slander, I should actually explain my issues with the character after I dispel something. I'm Manga Common, and this is Crow Hogan, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s worst character of all time. Spoilers for Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds! When talking about Crow Hogan, and to the greater extent the writing choices of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds past episode 30, there are two prominent rumors that are relevant to this discussion. There's normally a third one, but the one involving the Japanese voice actress for a character named Carly, joining a cult, has been debunked a long time ago and isn't really relevant to today's video. No, we're talking about the two rumors that are, one, Crow was meant to be a dark signer, but that was changed because Black Wings became popular, and two, the Japanese voice actress for Aki Zayoi became pregnant, and as such, she had a step away for a while, and thus, not only her character, but also the writing for Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds had to be changed. The second one is relatively easy to disprove, since all we need to do is look towards dates. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds came out in 2009 and ended in 2012. There's an article on Anime News Network which came out in 2014, which the voice actress for Aki announced her pregnancy. So, we're able to instantly throw that rumor in the trash. As for the first one, that doesn't match up with the timelines, and how anime production and car production doesn't work. Anime does not work in the same vein as something like South Park. You know, more mature looking, something that a woman I haven't seen in a while would think this guy's really hero, but also nurturing and supportive, something like that, that's what I'm looking for. That does not count! Now you may be wondering why I'm bringing this up. There are a few reasons for me to point these out. The first is to dispel any misinformation out there. Even a show that is well over a decade old, sometimes when I see a discussion, these rumors will be brought up, and oftentimes will be used as a defense for some of the poor writing choices in the second half of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. I made no secret in my videos when I talk about this series of Yu-Gi-Oh! that I believe that that the second half featuring the WRGP arc for Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds was at best handled messedly, and at worst was probably some of the worst writing that Yu-Gi-Oh! has had to date due to how it was set up. Even when I brought up that I was going to do this video about Crow, I had a few people ask me if I was going to talk about how the initial plan was to make Crow the antagonist of the first season, and how some people even online believe that he was supposed to be the leader of the Dark Signers, the major antagonists for the first half of 5Ds. Frankly speaking, I don't know how you could even do that. It makes no bloody sense, especially with the backstory that we're given for the character. I've always been a firm believer of being honest in critique, and though I may have a very apparent dislike of Crow, that doesn't mean I should use misinformation to illustrate my points or justify my dislike for a character. Now, you can dislike a character, story, piece of media, or whatever for any reason. The character doesn't look good, you find the story to be annoying, you think people online overhype it. But even back in the days of being a commentator who would respond to other critics' videos, I've never been a fan of basing distaste on misunderstanding or misinformation. And that's part of the reason why I'm even making this video in the first place. I think anyone who knows that when I say, FUCK YOU, CROW, it's obviously done in a hyperbolic state. And while I certainly don't like the character, he's fictional. 
He's not real. Then you won't mind me telling you that once I win this duel, I plan to turn Kybercorp into a company that specializes in children's trading cards. It already does For that. For actual children. How dare you, Pegasus! And as a critic who's been on YouTube for well over a decade, I feel that it's important for me to express myself on things that I feel are poorly done in a calm-headed manner. Still, fuck a you crow! But now we must go, why? Fuck you, Crow. Well, let's start at the beginning, shall we? We're first introduced to Crow Hogan rather late into the series, especially for a character who's supposed to be a part of the main cast. At episode 30, we're finally introduced to him, who is the front and center of the episode. To point something out, the last major character for the main cast was introduced in episode 14. That was Aki. That is quite the gap right there. Now, that's not me harping on the late introduction. Prominent characters all the time are introduced at different times and rates, and my complaint isn't so much on the lateness of the aspect. Rather, this just opens up so many questions about Crow and how he just inexplicably gets shoved into the plot. To make a long story short about some context you need, the beginning part of 5Ds focuses on the main character Yusei trying to get out of the slums known as Satellite, aiming to get back his first D-Will and his treasured card, Stardust Dragon, from the rival of the series, Jack Atlas, who had stolen them two years prior to the events of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. In the case of Crow, we're told that he has a connection to both Yusei and Jack, with all three of them having grown up in Satellite, all three of them being part of Team Satisfaction, a gang of duelists set on taking over the territory of Satellite, Satellite, and in particular, Crow being such good friends with Yusei. So that begs the question, where the fuck was Crow during all this? It's a genuine question that doesn't really get answered, especially if he was such good friends with Yusei and apparently was able to build his own D-Wheel, why didn't he help Yusei make his current one so he can go after Jack? We're also merely shown that Crow is willing to stick at the sector security, so why wasn't he willing to help Yusei get out of Satellite? Crow could have easily caused a distraction to get sector security off Yusei's back while he escaped from Satellite to go after Jack. From a writing perspective, there's no actual build-up to Crow's character before this introduction. He's not even mentioned before his introductory episode. And then, all of a sudden, we're just expected to believe that someone who has a connection between the two most important characters in the first 30 episodes just pops out of nowhere? Honestly speaking, looking towards the other characters too, we've already established quite a bit of backstory for them, and because of that, we now have another character who needs to take time and have his past be explored as well. To put in perspective, Yusei and Jack's backstory was pretty quickly established in the first five episodes. Then you've got the twins Ruka and Rua, which, while not certainly as deep, did establish the sister had a connection with the spirit world, and Aki, whose backstory is the last to be explored in the first 30 episodes, still shows quite a bit of why she is the way she is around episode 24. And to be frank, Crow doesn't really get much backstory about himself or why he is the way he is until episode 94. That is insane! We do get other little breadcrumbs about Crow's past, like how he admired a legendary D-Wheeler who essentially used a bridge and a D-Wheel to fly across the sea to escape satellite, and he actually learned how to read because of dual monsters. That's something, but when the legendary D-Wheeler is revealed to be the major antagonist of the Dark Signer arc, we don't really get too much of a payoff for it. At most, we get a reason as to why Crow has a connection to the antagonists and actually adds something for Crow to do, and... It's giving us power like never before! The mark of the dragon head is with me? Huh? What in the world? <sighs> we'll be getting back to that. Trust me, I've got a lot to say about that. One of the first things I don't really like about Crow is that it feels like he's a character that's shoehorned into the plot and into the other characters' backstories. And frankly speaking, I feel that because of this inclusion, it's really hampered the writing of the other characters and the story. It's a complaint I've always had when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, especially in my videos. A bloated cast. I'm not talking about one-off characters or side characters. Yu-Gi-Oh as a series always has big casts of characters, even the main circle of characters, but because of that you have to divert attention to and from certain characters, especially with the limited screen time that you have. Even more so, like unlike the original Yu-Gi-Oh, much of the Yu-Gi-Oh animes are original properties and don't have original manga to base their plots and character beats off of. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's main cast was already pretty big, with fine main members who are essentially all chosen ones, but with Crow, you've added a sixth wheel into that fray. Oftentimes, when it comes to Crow, you hear complaints about how he stole the limelight from other characters like Aki and the Twins, characters who had great establishments and character arcs in the first part of the series, but then fall to the wayside in over favor of following the big three of Yusei, Jack, and Crow. And at times, especially before Crow got that blasted mark on his arm, it really felt like the writers were trying to push him into having 
connection with the actual main plot. Take for example with his duel with Bomber, a prominent character from the first season's tournament arc who got wrapped up with the Dark Signers and eventually challenges Crow to a duel. For context, in episode 44, when Crow was fighting against another character, Jaeger, thinking that the clown was a Dark Signer, yes, evil clowns. Before the duel between Crow and Jaeger could finish, a load of darkness springs up with Crow driving his D-wheel trying to escape it, only to survive by hiding in a fridge. Yes. He pulled an Indiana Jones to survive. Anyway, Crow does get injected into the actual plot with his duel with Bomber. I'm not actually opposed to this since the duel does show a bit of backstory for Crow and there is a tangentially related motivation for both characters. Bomber as a character established that he wants to avenge his village and that dark cloud that almost engulfed Crow basically absorbed the souls of the orphans that Crow was taking care of. While I have gripes with Crow being injected into the plot like this, in this duel it kind of works. We learn an interesting fact about Crow and actually how we learn to read by dual monster cards. That's something I enjoy, plus this kind of is badass. We're told constantly before this point that signers are the only ones who can take down a dark signer. It's something that established pretty quick, but this duel proves that dark signers are just duelists with supernatural abilities and they can still lose. Crow was in an interesting position since he was an outsider, and said outsider was able to go toe to toe with a dark signer. I stated before on my channel that I'm not a huge fan of the chosen one tropes. That doesn't mean it can't work, I'm just not a fan of it. So when you've got an outsider who's able to do at the very least make a dent in the enemy forces and is able to keep on fighting, that's something that I love in a character. I know that it sounds that aside from the questions about his backstory and him being injected into the plot that I may actually like Crow. And here's the thing. I used to. But that only lasted until... <sighs> All right, let's talk about it. I don't think I'm being out there when I say this has been a pretty contentious point when it comes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's anime and fandom. Crow becoming a signer. Now, there are a number of reasons why people took issue with this, and frankly speaking, I kind of agree with them. Turning Crow Hogan into a signer is a polarizing moment, and even I know some people who like the character did not like this choice. And there are a few reasons for it, one of them being the praise that I gave Crow. As a non-signer, he was willing to spit in the face of things like prophecy and destiny, showing that stuff didn't matter. And so what if the dark signers had this magic glue that can make them strong? They could still lose to the average duelist and show that anyone was capable of fighting back. He was a character who was fighting fate, and fighting not only for his future, but for the future of those in satellite. There was also the fact that when we're shown a flashback earlier in the series, showcasing the five dragons that were the dragons of fate, and notably, Crow's dragon, which wouldn't show up until the 90s episodes, is not among them. Hell, the character whose dragon was there, Rua, wasn't made a signer until the very end of the series. And to give context about the situation, the leader of the Dark Signers, Rex Godwin, was both a Dark Signer and a Signer as well. You couldn't really give Rua his own mark, because this whole shtick with the villain would have gone out the window. You couldn't have anyone else become a signer at that point because one, at this point we know that there were only five signers and two, there was some context that there could have been a sixth signer. Back to Crow, my biggest issue is that because of this mark, they essentially just spat on the characterization and the ideas they had for the show and Crow himself. The guy was essentially pissing on fate, not really caring about being a signer and more or less caring about the well-being of Satellite and its citizens. And the Crimson Dragon's all like, now you get to be a signer too! You! You get a sign and mark! You get a sign and mark! And you get a sign and mark! There's also the lack of Crow's deck having a dragon in it. Yeah, his black wings are pretty cool, but not a single dragon card in his deck at all. And when he did get a dragon, its effects were, well, there was no actual synergy with his deck. A look at the other signer duelists in their decks will showcase that while they have other strategies that interlock with their dragon,
dragon's abilities. Even Ruach, whose dragon is a machine type, works in tandem with his deck that had a focus on equipped cards. Crow's dragon, though, it's an anti-burn strategy that doesn't really come up that often, especially with Black Wings. It's got an upgraded version since then, but we're talking about a narrative idea back in the day. What's even stupider is that apparently Crow's dragon was stuck in his D-wheel. No, I'm not even kidding about that. The dragon was in his D-wheel the whole time! Which leads to some interesting questions. Like, in the episode where Crow is set to get his own dragon, he claims that his D-wheel, the Blackbird, was actually left to him by another character named Pearson. Let's put aside the fact that, once again, this is the first time we learn about a character that's supposedly really important, especially when it pertains to Crow. Not once in the 63 episodes that we get after Crow's introduction does Pearson come up. At all. And that's weird because it also contradicts a line where we first see Crow and Yusei together. <laughs> So apparently Crow finished his D-wheel, but he didn't actually build it? The scene with Yusei reuniting with Crow suggests to the audience that one, Crow built his D-wheel by himself, for himself, and two, Yusei knew about it for a while already. I suppose he could have been repairing it from Pearson. I mean, the guy did die in a fire. <laughs> This is a personal issue? What, being on fire?! But if that's the case, Crow never replaced parts or got an upgrade? And what about where the damn thing is? How the frick did Pearson put that car in the D-wheel? Why did he put it in there? Blackwing Dragon just pops out of Crow's D-wheel for no reason. And how did no one find the damn thing? We see plenty of times where the cast's D-wheels are being tinkered with on screen before this point, and no one saw this at all. It's a really messy contradiction in the lore and characterization of Crow, and I'm not that big of a continuity snob, but it comes off as if the writers didn't have an idea for Crow after the Dark Signers arc, which is sadly something that can be expanded upon to the second half of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, but that's for a different video. Really, the issue comes up because Crow was a signer. Because instead of just being a scrappy Robin Hood-like figure from the satellite trying to help out orphan kids and his friends, he now needs to have a backstory to explain not only how Crow got his own signer dragon, but also to interject a theme of legacy into Crow. Because Blackwing Dragon, the D-Wheeled Blackbird, and possibly even Crow's Blackwing cards were all supposedly Pearson's belongings. I say this because Pearson, before he dies in a fire, literally, gives Crow his dual disc and Pearson's deck is in the damn thing. So was Pearson supposed to be the fifth signer but died before the predestined events? Or does the Crimson Dragon get to choose the different dragons to become signer dragons? That's not even raising the question of how the other signers got their own dragons, which could have been a fun little exploration of lore and characterization for the signers and have them bond over it, but nope, don't get that either. Making Crow a signer was a bit of a mess, and before you ask, no, I'm not blaming Crow. If anything, the biggest issue with Crow comes from the writing of the series. He's more of a simp than, than anything else. I have made it no secret in my videos about Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, and even in this one, that the biggest flaw of 5Ds was its second half, especially in the writing. And Crow, I believe, is a focal point of that, since he was made into the third element of the trio of characters. You say, Jack and Crow. Hell, even the opening credits make that apparent for the third season. It's because of this and the structure of the latter half of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds that had a tournament arc that had continuous three-on-three -three duel setup that it really choked out a lot of other potential plot points and pushed other characters like Aki and the twins to the side. When you look at some of the many side plots that were raised and didn't either come to fruition or are rushed through, it's easy to see that there were issues. The twins learning how to use D-boards so they can speed duel and fight against the big bats for this arc? They only speed duel once, and it's for these two episodes where they get the boards, and they don't ever speed duel again. Cards of Darkness, Blood Mephis, Doom Ray, and Hook the Hidden Knight. Cards that can actually inflict damage onto people, introduced as a threat, but never get really explored other than being one-off lines. Aki losing her psychic powers, only to get them back a few episodes later. Speaking of Aki, Sherry LeBlanc, a prominent character introduced when Yusei was kidnapped. She actually showed interest in Aki, especially after Aki saved her life with her psychic powers. And by interest, I mean... <laughs> oh. 
And yes, that gets rushed to all hell in the final arc. And for some goddamn reason, the writers thought it'd be a good idea that the actual duel between Aki and Sherry needed Crow in it, with him getting more of a focus. And that's just some of the issues with 5D's writing. And I bring this up because there's a ton of filler episodes that ultimately, while interesting and fun to watch, mainly because Crow gets hurt, <sighs> don't really lend any development to the overall plot or even the characters. And that does overall hurt the story and the characters, especially since one of the prevailing themes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds is bonds, and more specifically, the connection between the signers. Ultimately, if I somehow had the ability to change the plot of 5Ds, I would have at least made the filler much more character-based and have the signers pair up in episodes, growing not only as people, but as friends as well. Because we do get moments of that. Like, some of my favorite scenes actually include stuff like Yusa, helping Aki out with trying to get her D-wheel license and showing her the ropes by roller skating. God damn it, Shin Yoshida, these two are so cute! I'll never understand why these two couldn't be a thing in the ending! Screw you, Shin Yoshida! <coughs> But there's also a scene in the WRGP that involves Crow and Aki, where Aki has to take Crow's place in the tournament, much to Crow's protest, since she's a rookie. And since she ultimately didn't do that well in the actual match, Aki gets depressed about being a detriment to the team. However, Crow doesn't admonish her. Aki is well aware of how poor her dueling was in a professional setting, and even when she was given Yusei's Stardust Dragon to help her out, she failed. However, instead, Crow values her effort in what she did. The problem from this, despite me liking it, is that it comes from Aki's setup with learning how to do riding duels, and it comes off as intentionally writing her to be a sacrificial lamb for Yusei to pull the victory out of his helmet, and in turn wastes not only the heartwarming scene Aki and Crow have here, but also the conflict that Crow had with Aki taking his place when he was injured and because she ultimately achieved very little in the duel itself. I will not lie here. A lot of the writing issues do use Crow as a scapegoat for the issues I had with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. I still do not like the character, but a lot of that is attributed to the messy decisions that Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds had. It's just that Crow goes in tandem with it. If you want an example of how messed up the writing got for Crow Hogan, just take a look at what happens in the final episodes. He becomes a member of Sector Security! essentially a cop. It makes my head spin that the writers thought making the guy who has tons of security markers plastered on his face, a guy whose introduction was to be a Yu-Gi-Oh version of Robin Hood, actively stealing from Sector Security, fights against Sector Security multiple times, and has a past with Sector Security, why the bloody hell would Crow join Sector Security? And how? He's still technically a criminal with those markers on his face. Yeah, let's take our rogue character and turn him into a copper. That's not jarring as all hell. Once again, we're missing vital setup and information about why Crow would choose this line of work. I'm just glad in the epilogue time skips, we learn he actually quit being a security officer to become a professional duelist. That certainly would have been a weird note to end Crow on. If you've noticed something in this video, especially with my critiques of Crow, a lot of the issues stem from the writing not actually doing proper setup with the character and any development that he could have had. And ultimately, it feels like Crow is a rushed character. The writers try to make him a likable character at the start, and then rush him to make him into a signer. Then they have to waste our time with tons of filler before we actually get a contradicting backstory. Then rush a believable character dynamic with one other character of the signers. He almost comes off as wasted time of potential. And since a lot of the time he's regulated to duels that ultimately don't matter, since they don't set up anything of meaning and don't really develop his character, which there really isn't any character development for him. Crow is a static character, and the only time he really changes is when it's a neck-snapping change like him becoming a cop, which is weird because he was elevated out of nowhere to become a protagonist and pushed the other half of the main cast that was established to the side. As a character on paper, Crow is fine, but the execution and utilization of him is what makes me hate him as a character, especially since it's at the expense of the other characters too. But it didn't have to be this way, and there's one actual change 
change that could have been done to make a lot of these issues disappear. Oftentimes, when you watch YouTube critiques, especially when it comes to writing or mechanics, people just want to put out their criticisms and leave it at that. It's a fictional product. It doesn't matter. And don't get me wrong, I'm fine with doing that for a while, because sometimes most people are just there for the critique and don't care for how to fix it. Especially when it comes to writing, since a lot of the time it can come off as being just fan fiction. Well, I used to be a fan fiction writer until I realized I couldn't get any money, and no, you cannot find my fan fiction items. Whoa, I'm not reading that crap. But just for today, let me explore the simple change that could ultimately fix some of Crow's writing issues. And that's to not make him a signer, at least not when he canonically did. You see, you can either do two things with this. One, Rua actually gets the tail mark and becomes a proper signer. Or two, Godwin is actually defeated and the fifth mark disappears. Either way would work, but the main goal is to keep Crow as a rogue element, that he doesn't have a mark and make him a part of the main cast. After all, Rua wasn't a signer, but he still was a part of the main cast, and you could even have a bit of a camaraderie set up between the two, especially if you make it so the fifth mark disappears. After all, their closest friends and even family are signers, and they could be the odd men out. It not only allow these two to have a common element between them, but would allow Rua to have more admiration for Crow, since, you know, Crow was able to defeat a dark signer without actually needing help from another signer, something that Rua didn't have the ability to do. And you could even turn the whole Blackwing Dragon event into a buildup for Crow. Instead of it coming out of nowhere, you could have it be foreshadowing that he could potentially become a signer himself, instead of it just being plopped onto him. Especially since Blackwing Dragon doesn't get an upgrade, much like how Yusei and Jack's aces got powered up in the series. It also would add a bit of tension and mystery, especially if we go with the mark just disappearing when Godwin is defeated, and whether the mark is completely gone, or if Rua and Crow would be the ones to inherit it. Now does this change fix Crow completely? No. But it does address some of the major issues that I have with him as a character in the writing of 5Ds. But that is ultimately a fictional band-aid on a gaping wound that is the writing of this series. I hope I've demonstrated well in this video why I dislike Crow, and it actually isn't the character's fault in and of itself that is the issue I have with him. We do have to realize though that the writers actively chose to focus on him, a character who came out of nowhere. He did take time from the show and push other characters out of the spotlight, as well as making some of the plot points and setup make no sense. There are many things that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, but the people behind the show decided to not focus on the plot threads and potential that they had at their fingertips and putting more into Crow who ultimately didn't really develop as a character. And there are things I didn't get into that would have been completely paid to bring up. His one-sided duels, the stagnant personality, the whole idea of underdogs being overdone, and the fact that he was brought back into another show and actually made the whole series a slog to get through because of his redundancy. But do I hate Crow as a character? In a vacuum, no I don't. On paper, the guy is a perfectly fine character concept, but he represents a lot of the issues I have with writing of characters. Pushing other characters out of the limelight, not actually developing as a character, and frankly speaking, the biggest issue, I find him boring. He isn't offensive as a character like, say, Chloe Price, but ultimately, Crow is one of the worst things you can have in your piece of media an ultimately wasted character that drags down the potential of the entire media. So, if you enjoyed the video, please put down in the comments the one phrase you really like me for. Fuck you, Crow! I'm Manga Common, and thanks for watching. Fuck you, Crow.